Hi guys, it's Aish here again. Welcome back to my channel. Um, sorry I haven't been filming. I, I actually was ready to film a few weeks ago, but I decided to go grey. So this is my transitional hair. So let's just get out of the way. Yes, it's white and yellow. It's a bit more yellow there. But it's a transitional colour. Although I, I am liking the white bits. <laughs> anyway. So as I said, my name is Aish and I'd like to thank all new and returning viewers. Um, you can catch me on Ravelry as The Sticky Stitch as well as on Instagram as Sticky Stitch, The Sticky Stitch. And I do have a, yes, and I do have a Ravelry group and I would love for you to all join um, if you haven't already done so. Um, I just want to make it a community. I know everybody talks about community, but I really want... To be able to chat with you guys and um, Ravelry to me is a safe space for all us knitters and crocheters and fibery people to go to so I would love for you to join um, I know it's mid-September but I am starting the um, my third scrappy September cowl and the scrappy September cowl will run for three months um, well, three months? When does, when does that make it? So it makes it mid-December. So yeah, let's do that. We'll run it for three months. Um, and basically it is make things with your scraps, with your mini skeins, or anything that you make that are small. So such as like, you know, your um, mitered square blankets, your hexi puffs, you might be doing granny squares. So each one of those is going to be considered a a finish but you might just use scraps on the toes of some socks that add that in there I don't care I'm not gonna police it you know you put a full cardigan in there I'm gonna say good on you and um, yeah it's just for you guys to um, encourage you to use some of your scraps or just finish any project that you've got on the needle so feel free to post in there and um, so I, yeah so by the time this uploads I'll have a a little spot where you can put it in there I haven't decided on prizes yet but um, I think every month I'll um, what's the word I'll give a pattern prize and at the end of the three months I will give some sort of physical prize so it might be bag and yarn or something like that I haven't decided just depends on how many of you enter so I'd love for you to enter the more you, ha you enter the more prizes I will purchase or make um, yeah, so that's about it. Um, do I have any other news? No, but it the, the sun is setting, um, but I managed to come home during daylight and I'm trying to do this quickly. Apologies if I'm speaking quickly. Um, um, yeah, so, and I'm going to try to make it as short as possible, but I watch everything on one and a half speed. I don't know about you guys, so feel free to put it on, go to your settings and put it on one and a half speed and listen to me really quickly. So firstly, I will go through some finishes I have and then we'll go on to my whips. Um, no acquisitions today, not because I didn't acquire anything, but because um, I'm trying to quickly do this because my brother-in-law and my nephew is coming back from overseas, so I want to go and see them. Um, yeah, so, okay, the first pair um, of socks, well, there's always socks in my finishes. Um, are these socks these are my I call them the my hibiscus tea socks the yarn is Felici in hibiscus and the toes and the heel is just some reg regia or maybe some admiral admiral sock yarn um, I, I usually do my socks on 1.75 needles uh, 56 all around two at a time magic loop um, and that's what I did for these ones and this time I decided not to cuff them I haven't sewn in the ends yet but so the last time I showed them to you that's where we were and so I managed to finish all of that and do the heel the heel if you're not familiar with it is a flegal heel because I do toe up um, I like doing the flegal heel if I'm not doing the afterthought heel because I've got an, I've got an extremely wide instep so your instep is there um, yeah so I prefer doing the flegal heel and actually I'm writing up a couple of patterns 
um, using that heel too for toe up people and then I just did some like florally stuff at the top and all I did was cast off so that the cuff would roll like that so yeah I thought they come up really cutely so I'm liking those and I'm glad I've got another sock off the needles because my aim is to have 90 pairs of socks because my theory is then I have three months worth of socks during winter and they've become extremely handy this year and I'm running out so if I am with if we still have which more, more than likely we'll still have some cold days um, I can um, put these ones and wear these ones so I can just wash them all at once so I just wash them once a year <laughs> I know it's terrible isn't it I'm just a lazy bitch the next pair I have is my Gorgeous Geisha socks. I call them that because they remind me of the Gorgeous Geisha tea that I have from T2. Because the Gorgeous Geisha tea from T2 is strawberry cream green tea. So that's why I've named them this. Again, same thing, toe up, two at a time. I cast on 16 stitches as, um, what do I do it as? in uh, Turkish cast on I don't know why anybody would cast on socks any other way when they're doing toe up Flegel heel I did a cuff basically I continued until I ran out of yarn this yarn is designed to pull and some of it did pull but not as much as I was hoping to um, yeah and it, it's obviously just my gauge so I didn't actually check what gauge they said to get it to pull and then I decided to do that florally design where you carry over carry up some yarn um, hoping that it'll pull more but it didn't really do that and I basically basically I'm saying basically a lot and I just continued up so these are shorties as well and I just continued to do that um, continue to knit until I ran out of yarn I think some of this yarn is flown somewhere in um, my LYS. I was winding up the yarn because I, I think I, yeah, because I, I was doing two at a time, the yarn was in two pieces because I'm mental like that and if it tangles, I just break the yarn. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and it flew, so there must have been another break in the yarn somewhere and it just disappeared under somewhere and none of us could find it, so... They became shorty socks so this was obviously where i was last time and i need all of that up so that's number two sock off the needles for the month which is good and the yarn is i don't know it's, i think it translates as flying saucer and it's from Chappelle shoppel now if you've got any questions i'm happy to answer them here but i i put everything in my project page in relation to the yarns and the needles that i use if i've forgotten um just let me know and i will let you know what's going on i think that's the only pair of socks uh, and the only other whip i have is this such a joy to knit now whenever people start knitting i encourage them not to actually knit a scarf um, we actually at my knit night at the library um, two ladies came and they wanted to learn how to knit so we showed them and um, basically we cast on so they can do it like a mug cozy because what we wanted because I was, what I was saying to the other lady when we were showing them is that what we should be doing is teaching forget about casting on because we want to see if they know, want to, they in, actually enjoy the art or the act of knitting so we just taught them the basic knit stitch and hopefully by this week they'll finish and we can just show them how to cast off and make a mug cozy. Having said that, I decided to make a scarf for my niece because she's wearing scarves now. She's being a little funky three-year-old. So I thought, what can I do it with? Because it has to be something that I don't mind if it gets lost and or if it gets dirty or whatever. So I got this fluffy yarn. I don't know if you can see it's just 100% polyester and it just feels like cherry toweling or whatever and then I edged it with that is it fun fur oh my god I had so much fun knitting it and you know people will poo poo acrylic and fun fur and all this interesting stuff but so much fun so I, I made her a scarf long enough so that um 
we can double it over and hook it around her neck so I'm sure she'll like that because she's turning into a girly girl I was hoping she was going to be a bit more um you know give me this spanner dad and all that sort of stuff but so oh, wow. that's all my finishes um yes that's all my f oh yeah that's all my finishes that I have with me there are a few other f no there should be another one somewhere I'm sure you'll have to see that next time actually let me go and see okay, so this is the other finish that I have I've got a couple more but they're in the car and I'm not going to go and get it but I want to show this one because I'm hoping the natural lighting will actually show the colors up so this is the Glen Finn cowl by Sally Oakley we got this pattern for free from the the wool gathering retreat that I went to this year and we also got some yarn for free as part of our goodie bag and that was the Eva yarn by Great Ocean Road Woolen Mills and the yarn is part Polworth part alpaca Surrey alpaca and the yarn was basically designed designed I hate using those but designed by the participants because they had like a multiple choice and they asked people what color would you like what mix of yarn would you like what weight would you like etc etc and so this yarn here is the yarn that we came up with so I had already made a cow like the the, the Glenfin cow that I, I I didn't get to show you guys because I actually gave it as a gift so I, I wanted to so I, I basically wanted I to gave, make myself I gave the Glenfin cow that I'd already made as a gift and I really wanted to make one for myself so I had some Eva yarn left over and I was trying to work out how I was going to pair it up with another yarn and I decided to stripe it because I was in the mood and I decided to use yarn that I had dyed as a gradient um, last year and if I have my phone I could show it to you but basic so basic I'm trying to stop myself from saying basically so this yarn here is my gradient so it starts off as a bit of brown goes slightly lighter and lighter so that pink into that pinky it's actually it looks a bit lilac-y too so it's a cross between that so I'm really liking how it turned out again got to weave in the ends probably not going to work with a cowl neck over a cowl but I'm loving it and I'm looking forward to wearing it maybe yeah I'll probably be able to wear this during the spring but yeah I love it and um, so you'll see all the yarn that I used and so forth on my project page but yeah so that's another finish okay and now to my works in progress um, I've got a few to show you obviously these aren't all of them because I'm one of those people who has a million on the go I'm making the Melbourne wrap that was that's in Shelley husband's new crochet book called granny square flare and the yarns that I'm using is four yarns so three of them are Shibui sock which is a discontinued yarn and that's them three there and then I'm also adding this to it and so I'm just making the squares in colors that I feel like making and because um, I've got it I've got a few of these balls so I decided it's time to use them up because they're very deep stash and I've only done two squares but I'm showing two anyway so that's the first one so I have to make I think 32 of these and then I stopped after this one but I'll pick it up later there's a few other things that I want to finish and um, yeah so I like that and I haven't decided what color I'll do and I'm choosing the colors colors randomly I probably should do some co um, color management and I probably after the first few I probably will start to do that all when I've done halfway so I once I see um, what the colors look like but for now it's all good and I'm just I'm sorry it's irritating when other people do it and I'm doing it and then I'm just apologizing rather than stopping doing it but that's how it goes so I'm just keeping all of that in one of my one of my I say one of mine I've got only, only got two field supply bags so yes so that's one project the next project it'll just be a surprise because I just picked up the bags and no that's 
No. No, that's not worth showing. Because it's probably just started or something and can't be bothered showing it to you. I've only done anything. That's not a project that I'll be... I just picked up bags. Like, I didn't even look what's inside them. Okay, so the next one I'm doing... And lately I've been all about quick wins and using thicker yarns. So, I made the Southern Ocean hat by Claire Devine. Um, you guys might be familiar, you might have seen a few of the um, podcasters showing her um, her tea collection book with all the hats with the tea themes. Um, but she designed this um, beanie to use the super bulky yarn called the Henry and this is from Tandy and it's again it's a Polworth what's the word? Polworth and alpaca mix. It's just natural barber poly. So I made the first hat and I made it wrong because look how minuscule it is. So I've got, I had two balls of that. So I've cut, I cast on the second one and then I think I did the pattern wrong. So I'm doing it backwards if that makes any sense. So I made it in the large size and um, I'm going to finish this beanie and then see how much yarn I've got left and if I've got enough yarn left I'll change the size of that beanie so I haven't um, blocked that one up yet so yeah so I'm just loving the little simple cables um, yeah it's be nice and warm and I've like this year it's probably been the first year where I've truly been wear regularly um, like almost every day been wearing a hat or a cat and a cowl um, mittens blah 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 all that sort of stuff so much fun so much fun although i don't know about you guys but i just get tired of people saying and did you need that and did you need that well, it's like how about you just assume that i need it like seriously just assume that i need it because 90 percent of the stuff knitted stuff that i wear 95 percent of the knitted stuff i wear 99 percent of the knitted stuff i wear it's like i've done it so are you getting sick of me answering yeah <laughs> anyway um Okay, now this one I'm showing you because just to show you that I've done it, but I have to rip it out. It's actually too big. I'm, um, I was reading some of the notes and some people were saying that the whatever size I did was too small, so I decided to do the large size. The hat itself is the, do I have a picture of it? Which would be unusual if I did because I usually don't carry stuff like that around. Because I do it all on my phone, like the patterns and stuff. It's the Liguria hat, L-I-G-U-R-I-A. And I think I must have got it for free, but I think it's a paid-for pattern now. The yarns that I'm using, well, I'm holding it in my, um, what's this bag? What was the bag company? That was uh, the... Bling your string. So it's in my bling, bling your string um, Star Trek bag. And the yarns I'm using are from Tandy and they're in their 8 ply Polworth. I'm not sure what the name of this is. Um, but this one's called Shearer's Bluey. So it's their darker Polworth and they over dye it with a navy, navy. And I just love that combination. I've called this hat my Sounds of Then hat because it just reminds me of Australia. And... I love Australia. I especially love Melbourne. I'm a true Melbourneite. So this is the beanie. I've actually ripped more than this back but because I thought I'd stuff the pattern up but then I decided I need to take the whole thing out. But that's... This is technically my second foray into brioche but this is where I'm understanding brioche now, finally. I swear I think when I was watching... When I was watching Stephen West, it's really cute how he explains it, and I I thought I understood it, but now I understand it more. The only thing that I haven't really learned is how to fix up a drop stitch. So I end up like tinking back. But that's how it looks so far, and that's how I would wear it. But brioche, if you're not familiar, is reversible, and that's how it looks there. So I was wearing it, that's how it stretched out too. But loving this, loving this, but like I said, I have to tear it out. But that's okay. That's okay. Now I understand it. Like, um, probably a week 
after about a few rows into it if somebody had said oh you need to rip all that out I would just be going there is absolutely no way that I would start this again uh, but now I started to enjoy it once it clicked in my head how it works uh, and once I learn how to pick up errors or fix up errors it's gonna be sweet if anybody knows any of those sorts of classes in Melbourne please let me know and I'll definitely be going to them no matter what the cost and then the last thing I've been working on I've been holding this in my my creative garage bag that I picked up at Bendy love it I really wanted the pineapples to be in the pineapple club but fortunately I couldn't because she had run out the yarn I'm using is Bendigo Woolen Mills Stella which is I can't remember what mix it is and I probably don't have a card of course I don't have a card to show the mix um, in their cast iron colorway so it, in some lights it looks black in other lights it looks like a really deep navy you know it's just it's just a weird color but it kind of glows which I really love and I cast on a cardigan I often don't make garments but I'm starting to because you know when you're my size you always just go oh, I'll just wait until I lose a bit of white I'll lose a bit of weight and then I'll cast them on. I'll lose a bit of weight and then I'm cast. Well, losing weight never happens. Do you believe I used to be a runner? Make myself sick. Anyway, <laughs> so I um, cast it on. The so the pattern's called the Vodka Lemonade by Baby Cupcakes, and I'm doing whatever the largest size is. That's what I'm doing. And I'm using Bendigo Woolen Mills because the yarn is. Um, What's the word that I'm looking for? It's a good price. It's, 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 it's good yarn for a really, really good price. And when you're my size, I'm not going to knit one that's all hand dyed and it's going to cost me 500 bucks. It's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. I'd rather spend it on a cruise or something. Anyway, so this way, I think it'll probably just cost me about 60 bucks, maybe. Not even. So... And I like, like, it's a cropped cardigan, and I like cropped cardigans for um, to wear over dresses in the winter. So, you start collar down, so that's the collar in seed stitch. And then I've increased, I'm currently increasing for the arms and the shoulders, and yeah. So, I haven't counted my rows because I had to, it's been such drama with this. I did I had to drop down all the way down and fix up some seed stitch I had to do something else and then I had to tink back because I did something wrong oh because I kept on increasing where I shouldn't be increasing like shouldn't be increasing like 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 in the front here um, so I couldn't really hide it and then and then I've discovered I'm, my stitch count is off, so I'm just going to have to fudge it and add some stitches somewhere, but I'm not going to tink back again. But yeah, and the stitch marker, I have no idea why the stitch marker is there, but the stitch marker is from uh, Victorian Studio, which has got a great podcast on YouTube as well. So this is just little bit of all sorts. I actually named this Agnes because I read a book called Burial Rights, and if you enjoy reading, um, I highly recommend it and obviously you're watching this if you're most likely a knitter if you're a knitter listen read it because because it's set in Iceland it's actually knitting is part of their their culture and their everyday life so it was really interesting and I actually listened to it on audiobook which was great because I'm still a bit with the audiobooks but the, the, the woman that was reading it was fantastic and she pronounced all the names and the places correctly because it's obviously, um, did I say it's set in Iceland? And it was just fantastic. I just loved it. So this is Agnes. And if you read it, you'll know who Agnes is. And that's about it, guys. I know this is probably one of the quickest ones I've had for a while. Um... So start with your scrappy September um, little finishes. So you can, you know, if you're making little toys, um, mitered squares, hexi puffs, granny squares, or basically any finish, I really don't care. But I'm still calling this scrappy September cow.
or crochet, whatever, whatever the, whatever's on, um, Ravelry. So I'm not fussed. Like it can be knitting, crochet, weaving, whatever, loom knitting. Um, yeah, so that's about it. If you guys know of any classes that teach brioche fixing in, um, Melbourne, let me know and I'll definitely go to it. Oh, I'm not even willing to go interstate. Who knows? Because I deserve, I feel like I need a getaway. Um, other than that, um, I will be at the Melbourne Fibre, Yarn and Fibre Festival on Saturday. And then I'll be at the Black and Coloured Sheep Wool Show in Packenham next week. Um, so make sure you say hi if you see me. Um, I like to say hello to people. Even though I'm, I, I know that around Fibery people, I'm really loud and you can't shut me up. But I'm actually an extremely shy and introverted person. So it's just I think that the fibery people bring out the the best I'm, I'm assuming it's the best in me and um maybe it's the yarn fumes too it just alters my um personality but that's all i'm um knitting for now next time i will show you some acquisitions i'm sure and although the acquisitions are slowing down because i've picked up some sweaty quantities of yarn from like um spotlight and um Bendigo Woolen Mills. Um, yeah, so, because I want to start the Timely Cardigan, but I haven't decided what the coloured stripe is going to be. I've chosen my, like, a neutral neutral colour, and so I haven't decided if I'm going to do lots of colours, or I've got some, two lots of skein, you know, two yarns that I can use, or whether I'm, yeah, so I haven't decided, because it's all about how many ends I need to weave in, and I don't want to weaving a gazillion ends. I also um, start. I want to start the Lempy Shawl. Go to my Instagram and tell me what you, which colour combination you prefer. I've got the original three yarns that I chose. Then I've got the green one, which obviously you guys know that I like chartreuse. Um, but then I remembered I had this blue yarn that I thought would also look fantastic with it. So if you can give me your opinion about what colour combo is better for you that would be great um, so that's three starts that I want to do plus any socks that I start and I've been really conscious of trying to use up all my scraps as well so if I've got it like um if I've already made a mitered square and a hexi puff and it's not enough for my bobble blanket I've been like I've just did some, I've made some granny squares and done some granny circles and eventually one day they'll be all joined together but there's no there's no rush in them and I'll show you them next time as well um but that's about it guys oh and I want to start the floozy cardigan too so I bought some yarn from Bendigo Woolen Mills um in their four ply in the lake colorway which is it's it's a green teal if that makes sense or a mint or whatever you want to call it but I want to over dye it because that's the main color and I don't want a plain yarn I want some movement in the yarn so I have to decide what sort of colors I want to over dye with and hopefully I don't destroy the yarn but um, that's about it guys um, it's getting extremely dark and I need to go off and see my nephew and brother-in-law when they arrive so take care I'll see you next time ciao